Hello, hello, hello. Welcome once again to the official Wrestling News 365 YouTube channel. Thank you very, very much for joining us here today. I hope you're all doing well. This is your NWA Power review for November 26, 2019 edition of NWA Power. Now, before we get into this, usually at this point, I would say, as always this week, NWA Power emanated from Atlanta, Georgia in the GPB studios for yet another episode on the official NWA YouTube channel. But this week was slightly different. This week's show didn't really air from the GPB studios. It slightly did, but not really. The majority of the episode was VTs, re uh, recap packages. We had a Thunder Rosa into the cage segment. We were hyping the pay-per-view into the fire, hyping next week's episode. And we also had a match, just the one, which lasted 73 seconds. Yes, you did not just mishear me, 73 seconds. Now, I want to preface this by saying I have just absolutely loved NWA Power so far. This was its eighth episode, and until now it's been a real throwback, uh, refreshing quality hour of wrestling television you've had live promos at the podium in front of a studio audience with quality and fun matches in front of a compact close quality crowd you've got none of this frilly wws sports entertainment sports entertainment but man they got and by there i mean the nwa got about eight weeks worth of bad into this episode tonight now, of course, you do have a degree, a degree of sympathy here, but not a lot, but a degree of sympathy, as this show was, of course, affected by the Jim Cornette controversy last week, who, of course, is no longer with the company after his offensive comments made last week during the episode of NWA Power. After the episode last week, NWA Vice President Dave Lagana released an apology and later, the NWA released a statement that Jim Cornette had resigned, so Cornette is no more with the NWA. If you want to hear my opinions and comments on this controversy, we released a video last week, so a link is in the description box below. So, with Cornette gone, a lot of people were obviously questioning what they were going to do with this week's episode. Of course, all the matches and shows were taped at their TV tapings at the end of September, start of October. So, was Jim Cornette going to appear on this episode? Were they just going to redub and redo the commentary? Were they going to mute Jim Cornette's commentary? Well, we found out they just scrapped the whole thing. The only Jim Cornette we heard tonight was recapping previous week's shows that you'd heard a little Cornette on, but that that was it. Joe Galley appeared to have re-recorded all of his cameras in a different room uh, that didn't appear to be at the GPB studios in Atlanta. And likewise, we only saw one match, if you can even call it that, which lasted 73 seconds. Yes, on a one-hour professional wrestling show, we saw 73 hours of fucking wrestling. What a waste of time. This wasn't in front of a studio audience. It was shot in front of an empty GPB studios in Atlanta with just Joe Galley doing commentary for this one. But the whole point of the question mark, who appeared in the match, in this empty arena match as they called it, is that the question mark's over with the crowd. You can't have the audience participate in wrestler with no audience. I mean, I suspect that they shot this within the last week, so they had at least some wrestling which was usable. But if that is the case, why not at least let them go 15-20 minutes? Lord knows you've got this time this week you obviously needed to fill. And then that would be all the wrestling we saw this week. The best things about NWA Power have been the studio, the promos, the matches, the crowd. And this week we didn't see any of it. It was like the heart had been ripped out of the program. Now, like I said, I do have an element of sympathy here. But realistically, not a lot of sympathy. You lay down with dogs and you're going to get fleas. This is just as much on the NWA as it is on Jim Cornette. The offensive comments were obviously made by Cornette last week, and he should be ashamed. It's 2019, they have no place in society, let alone professional wrestling. However, those comments were made eight weeks ago. The NWA had plenty of time to edit them out of the show and avoid all of this. All of it. Just think it could have all been avoided if you'd just taken the comments out of the show. 
So this is just as much on them as it is on Cornette, in my opinion. So my amount of sympathy on the, oh, well, you know, it's all Jim Cornette's fault that we can't use the matches that we taped, etc., etc. No, it's just as much the NWA's fault. And who suffers the most out of all of this? The fans. The fans are the people that you've built up and up over the last seven weeks producing this fantastic pro wrestling TV show. And they had to witness one long ass YouTube recap video last night. And honestly, that's what it felt like. A really, really long YouTube video. Because when it was finished, my first thought was, I mean, what a waste of time that was. I mean, we got some announcements about Into the Fire. But if you didn't watch NWA Power this week, if you haven't yet watched NWA Power this week, you didn't miss anything. Nothing. Now, they're advertising matches and content for next week. So it would appear that NWA will be back to business as usual by then. I'm assuming they'll be redubbing the commentary or finding some workaround to replace Jim Cornette on commentary. So here's hoping we actually see some professional wrestling on the professional wrestling program next week. We can only hope. But yeah, I mean, not good, NWA. Not good. If you make a mistake or talent makes a mistake, it shouldn't be the fans, your audience that has to suffer. The minimum you can do to your fans is put on a good show. The, that is the absolute minimum. Because if you think about it, there's a portion of your audience that was probably really, really offended by Cornette's comments last week. Now, there was a portion that actually weren't offended at all. There's some uh, a portion of the audience that are saying that they thought it was harsh that Jim Cornette got fired. I'm not in that portion. I wouldn't say I was completely offended by the comments, but I think it was... They were distasteful. I don't think, like I said, they have any place in society, let alone professional wrestling in 2019. So there was definitely a portion of the audience that was really offended by his, by his comments. And their estimation of the NWA has gone down when they heard those comments last week. And then it's gone down even further when they find out that they could have been edited out of the show and they weren't edited out of the show. And then, you know, they might give NWA a chance. They might think, well, you know, I'll give them another chance. Maybe it was just Jim Cornette. And they watched that excuse for a wrestling show last night. And their estimation of NWA goes down even further. So as seven days go, I mean, it can't get a lot worse (laughs) for the NWA. The only way it can go is up, right? Now, of course, I'll be watching next week. We'll see if they can get back to normal. But the NWA needs to learn a big lesson from all of this. Because this is a mistake you can only make once. So let's get on to the show. Hopefully we can get through this pretty quickly. Lord knows it didn't feel like it when I was watching it. We opened the show with a recap about Camille. About if Nick Aldis, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, will let Camille speak. He goes over saying her actions are her own and nothing to do with Nick Aldis. We then see a recap of Camille talking about uh, talking to James Storm at the end of last week's show. And Storm saying, sorry about your damn luck. We then have the Into the Fire intro. I'll say it every single week if I have to. The Into the Fire is an awesome intro. But it would appear that the NWA Power intro has been redone and edited. So no Jim Cornette in this one. We open the show with Joe Galley. Who talks about the announcements for the Into the Fire pay-per-view. He says the match for the World's Heavyweight Championship will now be a 2 out of 3 falls match. Similar to how it was at the NWA 70th anniversary show. Uh, Joe Galley was in this little room, obviously not at the uh, GPB Atlanta studios. This was obviously reshot and redone within the last week. Uh, So no more Jim Cornette on cameras here. We then go to an interview with Dave Marquez and Eli Drake at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, not the NWA studios. Eli Drake says that people have suggested that Eli Drake reminds him of The Rock, Steve Austin, Ric Flair. He says he doesn't mind those comparisons. At this point, actually, I would just like to take a a second here. The Championship Wrestling from Hollywood crowd actually booed The Rock and Steve Austin here. And I I was sort of thinking, this isn't like, you know, this isn't The Rock and Steve Austin, you know, work for AEW or they currently work for WWE. These are legends. I mean, come on. I mean, what a harsh audience there. You're you're booing The Rock. Steve Austin, Steve, they're the two but arguably two of the biggest megastars in professional wrestling ever. These weren't, you know, typical sports entertainment people. These were, these are the guys, you know, cut a bit of slack. Eli Drake says one comparison, though, really chapped his ass. He mocks Nick Aldis's British accent. Hey, we take that personally over here, Eli. Okay, just remember that one. Uh, he says that Nick Aldis had said that Eli Drake just wants to be like him. 
Eli Drake calls himself championship caliber. At this point, there were quite a lot of edits in the promo. They obviously had to edit this down. Um, but anyway, Eli Drake then begins to talk about Ken Anderson. He says that some people have said that Eli Drake and Ken Anderson would be a dream match because they're both so similar. But Eli Drake doesn't see it. He says that Ken Anderson can talk a good game, but the difference between them both is that Eli Drake can't stop being Eli Drake. Well, yeah, of course, considering you are Eli Drake and he's Mr. Anderson, but I mean, okay. Um, I thought this was overly long. I mean, and this was the edited version. I mean, you'd think with all the time they needed to fill the program this week, they would have just aired the full promo. But even the edited version felt too long. I mean, I really like Eli Drake. I think his work's great. I think his promos are good. I think his look is tremendous. Um, he obviously signed with NWA over AEW and NXT, so they were after him. But um, this just didn't do it for me. He he just said a lot. This is one of those promos where he just said a lot without actually saying anything. Like, if you were to go back and watch it, you start asking yourself, well, I mean, what is he actually saying here? It's just This was just a lot of phrases and catchphrases and you know, hot button words that didn't really mesh together or really go anywhere. So yeah, this one, this one wasn't, wasn't for me and I'm a big Eli Drake fan, but uh, yeah, I didn't think this hit the mark. We then see last week's return of the Rock and Roll Express. They talk about the NWA World's Tag Team Championship match they have next week against the Wild Cards. We see a recap of the promos from the Rock and Roll Express and the Wild Cards next week. We then see highlights of Thunder Rosa's MMA debut and how she prepared for the fight. This segment is called Thunder Rosa Into the Cage. We see Thunder Rosa training 24 hours before her fight. She even trains with her face paint on, which I thought was a nice touch. But I was just thinking when I saw it, I couldn't think of anything worse than you. I mean, as a person that likes to go to the gym, um, training with face paint on, can you imagine sweating? And that running into your eyes or the looks that you would get. I think if I walked into my local gym with face paint on, I think they'd throw me out. She then gets advice from her trainer for the fight. She talks about her journey. She talks about traveling a lot. That's obviously being a professional wrestler and an aspiring MMA fighter. Uh, she talks about reaching out, reaching out to other fighters who have also been professional wrestlers. She names drop, drops Rodney Mack here. A little blast from the past there. I haven't heard the name Rodney Mack for a while. Uh, we see her getting her hair turned into cornrows, as a lot of female MMA fighters do. She talks about her past, working with children. She also talks about a rehab facility. She worked in uh, a rehab facility for teenagers. And then she also talks about, this was quite nice, about wrestling being an outlet for her, for her, her helplessness when she felt when she was working with these disenfranchised children with addictions and mental health issues and more, that she felt like she couldn't help them so the anger and the helplessness she felt by not being able to help them, she used in professional wrestling. So I thought that was a nice a nice touch. I'll save my whole thoughts for the whole Thunder Rosa into the cage segment after recapping part two later in the show. But I thought this was well done. I thought it was a nice insight into the Thunder Rosa character behind, behind the paint, you could say. Uh, even though she was wearing the paint, and that doesn't really work. But you, you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, at this point, we're 25 minutes in to a one-hour show, ladies and gentlemen, with no wrestling match from the NWA so ever. Yes, 25 minutes, one-hour show. We're nearly halfway through and no wrestling match. Thanks a lot, Jim Cornette. We see recaps of Colt Cabana's National Heavyweight Championship victory. Joe Galley announces that the championship will be defended at Into the Fire. He talks about potentially facing Aaron Stevens or the question mark determining the next contender for the National Heavyweight Championship. This didn't really make a lot of sense for what he was saying, but Colt Cabana will be defending the championship into the fire, of course. We then have an Aaron Stevens promo with Dave Marquez actually inside the studio. Yes, we do go into the fabled studio for the first time in this episode, 30 minutes into it. Um, Dave Marquez asks if he's finally allowed to look at Aaron Stevens, which, of course, Stevens says no. Stephen then calls this main event, if you can call it a main event, a punishment. He calls this a punishment for what they did to Ricky Starks. They balanced the scales of justice and they're being punished for it. They being Aaron Stevens and the question mark. He says that tonight, if the question mark loses, the question mark will unmask. He says that the question mark hails from the deepest, darkest regions of Mongrovia. 
Yes, Mongrovia, that fabled, fabled country. He says the question mark is an expert in karate, which, of course, the question mark interrupts with karate. See, I'm getting better at it. He says they don't have a friendship. They have a brotherhood. And he says that when the question mark wins the match tonight, the Dawsons must recite Shakespeare. Yep. Shakespeare. <sighs> I mean, uh, well, we'll save it for after the match. We'll save it for after the match. So we have our match. The question mark versus Zane Dawson of the Dawson Brothers. An empty arena match that they're calling this one. More like an empty arena because we had to film it within seven days and we didn't have a studio audience match. Of course, that is too long a name to use, so we'll just go with the empty arena match. We have just Joe Galley doing commentary on this one. The question mark hits a big missile drop kick. And then the question mark hits the Mongravian spike. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. NWA power was fueled by 73 seconds of professional wrestling on a professional wrestling show. Yes. <sighs> Post-match. Dave Marquez says, as per the stipulation for the match, the Dawsons must recite Shakespeare. They re recite, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and temperate, etc., etc. Then they say that they're going to do it with conviction. So they start doing it with conviction. At this point, Aaron Stevens then grabs a bin or a trash can or whatever you want to call it from under the ring and begins to vomit in it. To which the question mark holds Stevens' head as Stevens vomits as the Dawsons continue to recite Shakespeare. At this point, honestly, at this point, I was starting to have a look around because I thought I was dreaming or something and having a bad nightmare. I had to double check whether I was actually awake and watching this show. And when I realised I was awake and watching this show and this was actually happening, I physically said out loud, what the fuck am I watching? I was worried that someone was going to walk into the room... And see that and go, what are you watching? I mean, this was not good at all. This was bad WWE. And the whole point of Aaron Stevens and the question mark being so fun and entertaining over the last couple of weeks is that they're seriously over with the audience. Without the audience, it's just dumb. It's goofy. And it looks like bad sketch comedy. Aaron Stevens, particularly is a performer that thrives off being in front of a live audience. And without having the live audience there, it just didn't work. And then the Dawsons reciting Shakespeare almost kills any notion of them being this big, bad, bully team. Because they lost to the question mark in just over a minute. And then they recited Shakespeare like a bunch of goofs. And then with Stevens vomiting, I'm using that with quotation marks, into the bucket. I mean, I was, I was genuinely, genuinely, I was at a loss for words. The only reason I'm talking now is because I had to write all of this down and be like, okay, I need to get this out of my head. What am I watching? You know, if WWE had this, they would get destroyed on social media, wouldn't they? I mean, just destroyed. Think of the criticism WWE got for the, the doggy poop bags and the guy in the dog suit. People lost their minds over that. So you've got to hold the NWA to the same standards. You've got to hold everyone to the same standards. This was WWE bad. It wasn't good at all. And I know they wanted to have some wrestling on this show, but honestly, that's the best you could do in seven days. You had you had a championship from uh, wrestling from Hollywood promo earlier on in the show. Why don't you just find a match from there? Air that match. You had the NWA 70th anniversary pay-per-view. Just go here, look, here's Nick Aldis, how he defeated Cody for the gold. I know it's already on YouTube, and it's a match we've already seen before, but it's better than 73 seconds of shit that we just saw. 73 seconds, 73 seconds on a wrestling show, 73 seconds. I mean, were the lights on a timer or something? Were you on a budget? I mean, just not good, not good at all. We then see Joe Galley in his little bedroom, sorry, just his room. He says that into the fire, it will be Trevor Murdoch versus the question mark. He said he's gone into the question mark DMs and that he's getting ready with karate. We'll get there in the end. We then go to a recap of Molina's debut and the alliance with Thunder Rosa last week. Joe Galley says that social media was buzzing about Molina's turn. No, 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 Joe. They were buzzing about something else and you know it. We then go to a sit down interview. With Joe Galli and Melina. Melina says she loves pro wrestling since she was a kid. 
She loves it when people fight for something. Nowadays, people are only fighting for their ego. But back in the day, they fought for their families and much more. And she loves the stories that pro wrestling offers. She says she wanted to come to the NWA because she doesn't just do any place. Melina just doesn't do just any place. It has to be worthy of her name. She says innovation sets her apart. And she likes to be, some, uh, be part of something like no other. That's why she's here. She doesn't like to toot her own horn. Well, guess what? Spoiler, she did toot her own horn. Uh, but before her, women didn't care about entrances. Women didn't use their flexibility. Think about her moves. She doesn't think she gets the credit she is due uh, for what she's accomplished. But that's okay. And we'll save that debate for a later day. She says that Alison Umke, not Alison K, Alison Umke, thinks she's the best and the way she treats people. She says she's not the best until she's beaten the best. She's carrying around the title like it's an accessory. She makes it known that the championship means something. She says that everything she's accomplished is not a joke. She says what she's accomplished is legendary and calls herself a living legend and that the title deserves a lot more. And she says that Melina is the person to make Alison Kay appreciate what she has or appreciate what she used to have when she loses it. Now, this was this was fine. You know, there was nothing particularly bad here. Um, it was a good interview highlighting Melina's intentions in the NWA, trying to put her over as a legend in women's wrestling. Like I said, we'll save that debate to a later day, whether or not she actually is a legend in women's wrestling. I suppose she did achieve quite a lot in the WWE, but to call her a legend, um, we'll have to see on that one. If this was a part uh, of any other episode of NWA Power, this would have been completely fine. But at this point, with hardly any wrestling, not hardly any, 73 seconds to be precise, let's remember that number. N w Instead of NWA 70, why don't we have NWA 73, bracket seconds, that's a t-shirt, wn365merch.com, come on. Um, so at this point, I was pretty turned off to this. So, I mean, it was a fine interview, but at this point, I was I was starting to be beyond caring for this episode. Finally, we see part two of the Into the Cage with Thunder Rosa. We see her make her way to the arena for her fight. We see her hands get taped up. Taped up. We see her shadow box, get her gloves on. We see that Thunder Rosa, unfortunately, though, loses the fight by unanimous decision. After the fact, she gets emotional that her fans were there, her family was there. Her coaches say that what they saw was very impressive. The other fighter she faced had a lot more experience. The other fighter was expected to finish her early and she went all the way with her. Uh, so she's very emotional. They put over that she has a fighter's heart. Now, I thought uh, that these segments, these into this uh, cage segments, this whole video package, I thought it was great. Um, like I said last week, I think Thunder Rose is a complete star. Honestly, I really do. I think she's a future women's champion for the NWA. She's the person for me that they should build the division around. I think this did a lot to show her character, have the audience really connect with her and feel her struggle and, and her fight, quite literally. Um, whether it's working with disenfranchised children, whether it's troubled teenagers in the rehab facility, and then seeing her take the anger out in the ring through the medium of professional wrestling. I mean, what a story. I mean, it's fantastic. Here's the problem. This is my one problem with it. Thunder Rose is a heel. Um, she's been portrayed as a heel in a heel faction now of Melina. And this was... I mean, the, probably the most baby face package you can think of. I mean, it was well done. I thought it was tremendous. And I really enjoyed it. And I I felt like I really connected with Thunder Rosa during it. You know, but at the end of the package, she's emotional, which of course would, you would hope would get the viewer emotional. She's crying. She didn't win, but by God, she came close to upsetting the odds. She had to f fight to get there. And she's only going to get better as an MMA fighter. You sympathized with her. You really did. But... Should you be sympathising with her if she's a heel? Probably not, right? Heels are dastardly. You're meant to hate that heel, you know? And at the end of this package, you certainly didn't hate Thunder Rosa. If anything, you gained, I mean, I know I did personally, I gained so much respect for her and thought, you know, this is a this is a baby face. I want to pay money to see overcome all the odds. Now, if they turn her baby face, I think they've got an absolute star in their hands. You could just use this package to turn her baby face and you've got a star. You know, they're with Melina now. Maybe the old, wily veteran Melina tries to hold Thunder Rosa down. And Melina says, you know what? I fought all my way to get here. I fought all my way in MMA. I don't need you. I just need myself. And I just need these people. I mean, that's your babyface promo right there. So 
this package could be the beginning of a star making moment like i said i credit to the nwa in terms of production i thought it was excellently produced um it was similar to those sort of ufc countdown documentaries if you've ever seen one of those if not i recommend you go and watch them just even if you're not a massive usc fan by in terms of their production they're so well done i mean really really well done so like i said this really could be thunder rose's star making moment just just not as a heel then to end the show we see joe galley back in his little room of doom uh, he announces that women's champion Alison K, Alison M K, as Melina called her, and Ashley Vox will be teaming up against two of Melina's team at Into the Fire. He promises next week we will have rec- wrestling action. So I'm assuming they're actually going to redub or get in new commentary for next week or something like that. Uh, they announce more matches for the card at in- the Into the Fire pay per view. And then the main event is announced to be Nick Aldis versus James Storm in a two out of three falls match. For the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. They also hype what did Camille say. What did she whisper in James Storms' ear last week. And then that's it. That's the show. My The only thing my notes have after this is dot dot dot. Wow. Which kind of just sums it all up doesn't it. I mean yeah just not good. Not good at all. Anyway let's go on to your opinions. NWA power in three words. At the end of every episode of NWA Power, we send out a Twitter post on our official Twitter account at 365Wrestle, asking our followers to describe NWA Power in three words. So let's take a look and see what our followers all thought of tonight's episode of NWA Power. I think this one might be a little bit interesting. So let's try and get through all of these. At Joe Sapent says, worst episode yet. I don't think you can disagree with him on that one. I mean, like I said, seven great weeks of TV, followed by eight, (laughs) what felt like eight weeks of bad TV on episode eight. Um, Mark Guitar One says, no wrestling at all. He's used, (laughs) he's used like four words there, but he's almost, there was no spaces in this. So he sort of moved it into one word. Very creative. At Moonfire Lark says, very, very terrible. Obviously, he wasn't a fan as well. Seven Wrestling 24 says, Waste of time. Again, I, I agree. Like, when I was watching uh, the segment about the Shakespeare and all that sort of stuff, the only thing I could think of is, what a waste of time. Like, there is so much more productive things I could be doing with my time right now instead of watching this. Um, At The Dark Doctor says, I fell asleep. And I'm with you there. I am totally with you. I was not far off at this point. Over here in the UK, uh, NWA Power airs at 11 uh, p.m. on YouTube. So, like, it's it's a late watch over here. And, wow, yeah, I was tired at the end of it. So, that was a tough one for me. At Wrestling Mark 8, says, pure dog shit. Which kind of speaks for itself, really, there, doesn't it? At Back to Life Comp says the drizzling shits, which, to be honest, is always a, fr- a favorite phrase of mine. I love the phrase the drizzling shits. It always makes me laugh. So when I saw that last night, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> that was maybe one of the, the most entertaining parts of NWA Power was seeing at Back to Life Comp say the drizzling shits. So thank you for that. At Weeknight Slams says absolute dog shit. He's also... Uh, going with the dog shit theme there. Wasn't a fan. At ADT with PDM has given us quite a few three-worded answers here, so I appreciate that. He says, Waste of time. Disappointing recap episode. Mongrovian shit show. Obviously referring to the question marks. Hometown and home country there. And Cornette ruined everything. He was obviously very, very, very upset with last night's NWA Power episode. Um, I would re- agree with two of them. It was a waste of time. It was a disappointing recap show. And the first word is the most important word there. Just disappointing. Uh, the Mongrovian shit show. Um, you know, I, I don't mind the question mark. I think the problem is, is when you have that character in a vacuum, which is essentially what it was last night, because there's no studio audience, it just it's just not good. When you've got the audience reacting and participating in it, it's great. You know, it'll make you laugh. 
and Cornette ruined everything. He definitely had a hand in ruining last night's episode for sure, but so did the NWA. I mean, we've got to remember that they need to shoulder the responsibility here as well. And finally, angry Mr. Bugle, I think, sums it up perfectly. NWA power in three words, it was shit. But what did you think of the show? Let us know your thoughts on tonight's episode in the comments section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once we get to that magic number of 1,000 subscribers, we'll be able to do live reviews of every show and really get you, our great followers, more involved in our reviews. Don't forget, you can follow Wrestling News 365 at, on all of our social media platforms on the screen right now. Twitter, that's at 365Wrestle. Facebook, at Wrestle News 365. Instagram, at Wrestle News 365. Storyfire, what's the handle going to be? You guessed it, it's Wrestle News 365. We will be uploading exclusive content to our Storyfire channel every Saturday and Sunday starting this week. So be sure to subscribe to us over there to not miss any of the action you won't be able to find anywhere else. You can also visit our website, WrestleNews365.com, for all the very latest news, reviews, exclusive series, and much more. You can also support WrestleNews365 by purchasing our merchandise. Visit WN365.com. That's WN365.com for all of our merch and apparel. Just in time for the holiday season, right? It's Thanksgiving over in the States. All of our good friends in the States, ha hope you're having a great Thanksgiving. Uh, over here in the UK, we never tend to actually know fully when Thanksgiving falls. So if it's already passed or <laughs> if it's whenever it is, hope you're having a great holiday. But just in time for the holiday and the Christmas season, you can go to WN365.com and get all your wrestling merch. Make your friends and family jealous. We really appreciate all your support on that. We really do. So thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you've come across this video today. We really appreciate it. Hope you have a great Wednesday as you're listening to this. And I'll speak to you again really soon.